It took 18 weeks for this business license to come. Uh, wow. When I thought it could have taken just maybe a week, yeah. it took 18 weeks. Running a bakery is the dreams of many out there. And today we have the honor of interviewing Remy, a French Asian baker out there. He's one of Vancouver's up and coming, most promising bakers. And that's the reason why I'm super excited to share with you guys some of the behind the scenes of how he is building his brand new location, Remy Patisserie. Now let's go and have a chat with him. Hello friends, today we have Remy here and we're going to be basically diving a little bit more deeper into his story and as you can see right now behind us, this is his new location, it's not done yet but you can see that he's actually built everything himself. You know like I think he's definitely a success in the making, I don't know if he knows it himself, he probably I does. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I want to be able to share with you guys like the, the really behind the scenes of, of him building this place up and I think what better time to actually document that and share with you guys his learnings, his stories, um, coming from a front of the house staff to being a pastry chef to coming out on his own running an Instagram business bakery and now having his own store. And so I started as a, as a dishwasher and then I kind of liked the environment of the, the kitchen because it's very hectic and I and plus I didn't know what to do after high school because mm. uh, I didn't like um, going to school at least. Uh, I, kept, I kept jumping from, from places to places because I wanted to just grow faster and faster because if you're in this industry you know you, you, can, you can get stuck in the same... Um, yeah. uh, the kitchen is really big so you're gonna be stuck in the same, doing the same thing over and over again, and it gets boring. Um, and money is it the mm. best for you know when you're um, not in the management uh, position. Yeah, yeah. So I kept like jumping from from restaurant to restaurant, and then afterward I was um, when I hit Chopino, um, I was working in their pastry section, mm. and that's where I kind of started to fell in love with. The, Dessert making mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it was um, it's a cool environment. It's not like around the, the, the fire. People yeah. aren't going to yell at you like yeah. because the chef is really you know like not demanding, demanding, demanding right? But the, it's 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 when you're in the pastry section, it feels like a little bit calmer. Yeah, everything is just like, but you still have that hectic environment. You still, still enjoy that. Yeah, you still have to go go go. But yeah, at yeah. the same time, it's like a little bit more relaxed, and yeah. you get to to like when these the dessert takes. Um, a little bit more finesse, I would say, oh, yeah, yeah. to to make. Uh, so it's not like cooking where everything is done at a minute, which is like you cook and then someone eats it. Dessert, you have to make it prep it long time ago. Mm -hmm. So it's all all about like organization and being. Um, and I, my mind is like I need to plan like a uh, yeah. lot, 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 and I over plan usually. So I kind of like dessert. After after that, I moved to instead of restaurant, I did. Um, Big bakery. So I was working yeah. in a bakery called Shipley Stuff, where I um, kind of learned all the basic, like um, traditional uh, French pastry over there. Mm -hmm. And then um, after three years working for him, I kind of wanted to come out and do it on my own. And where I was thinking, I needed to open my own store. That's the only next step I can, I can think of. So uh, I needed to learn how to make coffee because when you have a bakery, you Coffee mm -hmm. is like second, second in the menu. Yeah, right? yeah. So that's where I, I was looking for a coffee get, a job while looking, searching for a space. Yeah. And I hit uh, Oreo in Richmond, uh -huh. where the owner was a wine fanatic and he also loves coffee. And then I have zero background in coffee, mm -hmm. but he trusted me because I have pastry background. Uh, I started working for him and he was very like helpful in my progress. In in the coffee mm. um, field, I felt a little bit like just like every job. Like I feel like after at a certain point, I hit a point where like there's no growing. Yeah, and, and then I said, okay, where should I go now? A chef, when I used uh, Kira, she's in Toronto. So she's a chef I used to work with, and she asked she asked me if I wanted to go to Toronto to because she's opening a huge um, bakery facility uh, that it's like. Um, uh, like 6,000 oh, um, wow. square feet right, space yeah. and she asked me to go be the uh, head baker so I was really tempted because oh yeah because I, sure. I feel like Vancouver is just kind of like there, there was nowhere to go anymore mm -hmm. so I was trying I was thinking okay I'm gonna go but then I was also 
thinking after maybe after two years or one year I might hit the same problem I'm going mm. to have nowhere else to go so what is my what is my ultimate goal actually my ultimate goal I think was to create something with, like have my own freedom and have my own store mm -hmm. and do whatever I want so I said okay instead of going all the way there which takes a lot of like uh, Courage because you have to like oh, give sure. everything. If you have a house, you have to sell it. <laughs> anything, you have to like give it away. Yeah. And all the connections that I make here, mm -hmm. I have to like basically like say bye bye. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. So I wasn't ready for for well, I was ready for that, but I was thinking like if I had all that courage to give up all of that, mm -hmm. why not use this courage to open my own store, yeah. even if it's like a small one. Mm -hmm. So um, so I was thinking, okay, while working at Origo, I would also do a side gig which is like mm -hmm. bake something and then sell it online uh, so I found a kitchen uh, in this cafe mm -hmm. um, Sweet Barrel uh, the owner of Sweet Barrel was my friend he was a, a, a coffee fan like, like me and yeah. talked about coffee uh, and then he told me that he had a big kitchen and yeah. he didn't need, need most of it yeah. so he was looking for someone to sublease it so um, I said hey use me Mm -hmm. um, and then and that's where it started on my journey of like starting my own business. Please tell me more about like okay transition now from you pay baking and you entering this space and starting your Instagram. How did you build that your name for yourself? Uh, I really don't know <laughs> how, <laughs> how I did that. Uh, well. You know, when I started, um, it's really hard to market your, yourself. Like, mm. So when I, when I came out, like, nobody knew who I am, except mm. for my, my friends and my colleagues, right? So to get people to know me was, was, was hard. Like, mm. it's, uh, the first few months, I was just at Super and I was just making stuff over there and selling it in, in his shop. Yeah. So through his customer, so he has like, like food, food traffic. And basically through his customer, I was I was selling my pastry and I was talking to them and telling telling his customer yeah. who I am. Yeah. And um, that's basically basically how how I started by using other people's like um, right. customers yeah. for traffic. So my pop so I did pop up uh, in different places. So after at Sweet Girl, that's where I baked everything mm. and I sell a little bit over there. And moving coffee was. Uh, one of my favorite uh, coffee shop, and uh, Edmund was, uh, he's my friend, and he was, he allowed me to use his, his space mm. on a Sunday to, um, to basically come, to come over his shop and, and sell my pastries. And that really helped me because mm. like he had a lot of like great uh, food traffic and people who, who wants to his who wants to drink his coffee like they have they, they want something special mm. so I, I kind of like his customer mm. so um, so it was a perfect environment to for me to uh, introduce my pastry to, right. to Vancouver that helped me um, catapult to to uh, who I am to someone oh it's, my name is out there. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, doing pop up, it's um, it's a way for me to like market myself. Because mm. uh, just I, I did I do Instagram at the same time, but uh, I, I I do it by myself. Like mm. all my marketing on Instagram, I yeah, do it by myself. I'm not great, but uh, no, I, 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 at first I posted once one picture yeah. uh, every two days. Uh, now. Like I'm very lazy, <laughs> so that's not really helpful. I mean, yeah. You want to market yourself, like, but I have no time because I'm doing everything by myself. So yeah. I make, I market, I, I sell everything, and I, I clean everything. It's, it's me. I have no uh, corporate. And I have At no that time, work. were you still working? Uh, no, I already, I already, because, uh, so in February that's when I talked to the street girl to yeah. start my business, and in March I, I quit my job at Oracle because that. I, I felt like I, if I wanted to do something well, I need to put 100%. How scary was that? Uh, what, did you have any traffic coming in? No, I have, I have very no. little traffic and, and wasn't making money. It was just it was like, not making money. Was, was just like you know, um, testing the, the water. Like you have, in every investment you have to like uh, uh, invest. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to put some money and then and see if that money is going to return. I mean, maybe you're gonna lose it. So that was every business. It's kind of like a gamble. Yeah. So. Um, but you trusted yourself. I, you trusted that instinct. That was the right move. Uh, 
I have, I have like put out like this is the money I'm going to burn. Yeah. If if, if I burn it, it's fine. I'm not gonna cry, and I'm not, it's not gonna hurt me. So mm. that I put out a, a chunk of money, and I say, okay, this is how this is how much I'm going to use to mm. start my business. Mm. And if that that's over, then. Um, Find uh, the job again. Find that easy. Job again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, for you to have that courage to do that, that's that's awesome. Because I know a lot of people actually they want to, but the fear of jumping into the wild, jumping into the darkness, is so real. Like there's no safety net, no nothing. And, and I guess well, like, the good thing about me is like I'm single. I know I don't have the family to take care. Mm, I don't have a mortgage. Mm, you know, so I have nothing to lose. Mm. You might be asking like the rough range of how much you. you you're like, this is my amount, it's like 30k, 50k? Yeah, I started with um, 30k. 30k, you're like, that's my budget, I'm gonna throw 30k in there, invest my time, and see where it brings me. Yeah. That's awesome. But afterward, I, that 30k was like, like very limited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. So, I put in another like 20k after like a yeah. half a year, so. Yeah, because yeah. you see that there, there's I a see that there's, there's, there's working, yeah. yeah, there's working, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, then I invested a little bit more, and then, that's awesome. And then, and then like that grew by wildfire. Like I think once you started to do the pop-ups yeah. and then as you grow that and as you more and more people know about you, as people are more tagging you, it just kind of caught and it just tipped the scale and you just became super busy from there onwards, right? Yeah. Right? And I guess like when you're pulling in that much traffic, like, and, and at one point you were creating like, what, 200 cakes all by yourself for Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Tell me about that story. Uh... Well, that was that's crazy. Um, it well, it didn't it didn't kind of like it wasn't that fast to get to two hundred. Like, okay, so what was that duration? Was that a year or? Yeah, like, that was like a, a good. Uh, yeah, like ten months. Ten months a year. is very fast, my friend. For you to get yeah. that traction, <laughs> like to be able to have that kind of traction, that's really fast. Yeah. But there was a, a time where it, it was really slow mm -hmm. as well, because um, in after summer, fall time was like. Super slow. Yeah, and, for sure. And also, there was a lot of like uh, struggle finding a uh, spot to, to sell mm. because what I selling my my kind of HP doing pop up is very dependent on the location where I am. Mm. So it doesn't matter. So it's not like I can go anywhere and sell and, and still have a lot of foot traffic. People don't really want to travel too far for mm. something like. So they want to stick around the 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 city. Uh, if, if I went, for example, all the way to UBC, which is mm. all the way to the west, people are not going to like travel from, from all the way east to, to, to UBC just to, like, to buy my pastries, right? It's, so the location of where I do my pop-up is very important. And at some point, I didn't have the best location. Mm. So my, my sales was down uh, a lot, even though people like know about me, but it's, mm. I wasn't like that popular yet yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, until I... I stuck to one place, which is Sweet Barrel, like where I mm. produce my stuff. So I said, like, I'm not gonna go anywhere <laughs> in other other cafe because mm. traveling with my all my pastries to one place oh, or another yeah. is also very tiring. Yeah. So it's I like just delicate. And yeah, it's super and just, careful. Yeah, and then you have to like uh, like make sure everything it's it's really cold before you put it in your, in your mm. car because it's summer, it's gonna melt. <laughs> so you have to like all that little like it's just so hectic. Yeah. So it's it was very, just easier to to stay stick at one place at yeah. one place at some point because I already had a little bit of um, following. Yeah, yeah. So I just take that sweet girl, even though sweet girl, it's it's pretty far. Like comp like because all my customers are pretty much in the east side or mm. city side, like c middle like city center. For them to go to to sweet sweet girl, it's mm. a bit far. Mm. But since like I stayed there and I said I'm gonna go nowhere else. Well, they, they, they have to go. To find yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> If they don't come, then they exactly, can't exactly. Yeah, yeah. So and also like um, grew the the customer base in that area too. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Where Super is, even though it's not really tight, like it's not. Um, who you want to serve? Uh, it's not like who I want to serve, but it's not the the, the geographic um, that you cater that, to. That it just it took a little bit longer to mm. to grow my uh, my business there. So from but it did. Okay, it did. so tell me about the 200 cake story. Like, I, I really want to make sure that we get into that. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so from okay, from October to November, it started to grow. Yeah. And once it hit Christmas, every business. Yeah. Is crazy. I uh, started December. I started to announce that I'm going to do this this de Noël, this like this cake. Yeah. Um, for Christmas, 
and people have to start pre-ordering. Yeah. And people knew that if they want that cake, they have to tell me in advance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I tell everybody that it's only me who's who's baking. So the first week of December, I start taking orders. Yeah. I, in the blink of an eye, I have like a ton of orders. Yeah, said, like, yeah. Sorry guys, I have to to cut the orders. Yeah. And that was like way over past. Yeah. The last thing I could have done. Yeah. So. Uh, so I, I stopped at around 150, but I still took a, a few more because yeah. my friends said, oh, I didn't know you, you already sold yeah. out, and you have a, a deadline. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, yeah, fine, I'll take a few more. So then I had like 200 cakes. That's make. a lot <laughs> of cakes to make. Yeah, it took me, um, so during that, so 24 was Christmas Eve, so everything was, was people will come in and pick it up on yeah. Christmas Eve. But I cannot make 200 quick for Christmas Eve, so I have to like, like stagger it. Like stagger it. How hectic is it when you are preparing so many things? I, I, I slept four hours um, for for two days basically. Wow. So I, I kept. So I worked in the um, overnight. Overnight. Um, yeah. And I only went to went home to shower and then just to eat and then come back in the morning at wow. around 2 a.m. Uh, to same thing over to, again. To do it to finish the cakes and cut it and pack it because I have to like. Package everything. Yeah. One of the things that really kind of bothered me about you is why don't you hire people to help you out? <laughs> like, why do you want to put yourself through the nightmare? And even for this place, like, I, I think like you, you do decently well for yourself, I would say, right? And you, you've been busy. Why? Why don't you hire help? Yeah. I, I was going to hire help for uh, actually I did hire help for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, just to help me like package yeah. the, the cakes. So when you hire somebody to in the kitchen. Uh, and I should have hired way like before, mm -hmm. like, so, you train them. so I can train them, mm -hmm. right? But it's, it comes Christmas, December, and I'm so busy with work. Uh, there's no time to like like hold somebody's hand and yeah. make sure everything is done because that will actually slow me down. Uh, uh, so, so I rather just do it by myself, yeah, yeah. getting the time, okay. just hammer it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I didn't know that I was going to be so busy right, because yeah. September to November it was, it was, slow. It was slow. It was mm -hmm. dead. You're like, you know what, enough with this pop-up space thing. Like, I'm going to start building my own. And that's kind of when this whole thing conceptualized after the Christmas time. You're like, you know what, it's time. It's time for you to have your own space. Yeah, uh, at some point, um, I share in the kitchen. It's, 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 not, it's not really bad for two girls. They, they're very accommodating. But at some point, like, I feel like I, I'm kind of like in their way because they also need the kitchen and I'm, I'm, I'm growing so I'm, I think I, I'm going to a point where I'm actually using his his part of the, the fridge too, uh, and I'm using his part of, of so I feel like I'm, I'm, in, I'm stepping uh, over too much mm -hmm. so I had to like have so it, it wasn't able to contain my, my growth so in yeah. that space so I had to like find a new space so uh, and plus I didn't want to just open because I hope up is only once a week because that's oh, all right, I could yeah. that's all I could um, afford with one person work like myself. Yeah. So I needed a, a space where I can open more like more right. hours and, yeah. and, and grow my business faster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I needed to have my own space. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I found this this location. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not huge, but this is where my my money can take me for mm -hmm. now. So yeah. It's fun. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like for you to actually commit to this. Now you put all the profits, all the money you make. You're gonna roll it back into the space. Yeah. Build your own thing again. Yes. So yeah, reinvest everything. That's amazing. Yeah. And and I guess like, what are some of those challenges, struggles? Because you were sharing with me, like it's is a headache dealing with this. Oh, you know, when I took over this space, uh, uh, it's kind of like my fault too. Like not. Uh, like knowing how this, this system works because mm. the system is very complicated mm. to see mm. it's very like there's so many processes so many steps so uh, this 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 place that I, that I have right now is zoned to, to to be able to like bake in mm. here to have a bakery uh, except that the previous owner she, uh, she didn't she didn't have she was also doing cakes but she didn't bake her own she didn't use an oven so basically this store it was um, in the city's eye, this door is not baking. Mm. So when I when I took over, I said I'm going to transfer the business license and I'm gonna keep it as it is. I'm not changing anything. Hopefully that with that they will just give it to me really quickly yeah, yeah. the business license, right? Because I'm not doing anything. I'm just yeah. doing the same thing as the previous owner. Mm. And it took 18 weeks for this business license to come. Uh, wow. When I thought it could have taken just maybe a week. Yeah. It took 18 weeks. 
it. So that's also because of COVID too, you know, yeah. um, the city could like shut down and then the lots of people are not um, working full time, they're probably mm. working at home too. So everything was backlogged. So mm -hmm. um, my, my application didn't arrive to someone's hand until like uh, a few weeks after I submitted the application. Right, so yeah. just that, you know, and then plus it took a, a lot more time to process it. So 18 weeks after I got my business license, so I thought, okay, now I can just like get an electrician come in uh, and plug it in. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't know that being a new tenant in a, in a space, I needed to apply for a building permit. Mm -hmm. No matter what small small stuff I need to yeah, do, yeah. Uh, I, need, I need to get a building permit. And right now, I, if I start now, uh, it will take another uh, seven to 14 weeks. So that's gonna be like until the end of the year. Yeah. So basically, I cannot bake in this in this in this location for for another like three months or so. That's crazy. So from the moment that you sign this lease, it's almost seven months. Yeah. That you can't do anything. Here. Yeah. I cannot I cannot bake here, but I can you I can, can, your I can cook. I can yeah. run a business. I have a business license. I can cook. I can so I can produce something. Mm. Some I can produce my my baked goods somewhere else and come here and sell it. But that's the plan right that's now. That's the plan right now. So that's what I'm going to re-rent the, the previous location, yeah. a sweet barrel, big stuff there, and yeah, then finish it here yeah. and sell it here. It's crazy because running a business is never really as you plan. Yeah. You have a certain vision of like, hey, this is how everything is going to plan out. That's my vision. I've done this before, so it's probably going to work out. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, that's a seven month penalty you're slapping on me. Like, what, what's going on? What the hell? Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, what I was telling you earlier is just like, you know what, it's just going to go by in, in the blink of an eye and you're going to come back to it like a year later, you're like, wow, I built this place, everything is running smoothly, I can bake in this place, people are coming in, this is going to be my home, yeah. and that's going to be when, yeah, when that happens, with it. Yeah, when that happens, I'm going to be super stoked and you know, super happy, but until then, I'm just, every day, I'm, 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 I'm just worried about like another struggle that will, will come. It will come, by the uh, way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. It will come. The struggle from the city, you know, like that's, yeah. that's the struggle I hate the most, like mm. dealing with the, the, the city. Like I don't mind if I have struggle like with other things, other other things than other, like, yeah. like maybe like hiring the, yeah. like people, you know, yeah. my, my corporate problems, you know, like that's, uh, I, that would be even better than like, I know mm. that that's pretty hard like, like with like, uh, hiring people, people have to go, people have to hire new people, that's going to be a, a, a next struggle mm. to, to like train people yeah, and yeah. to do what I want so, uh, and making a, and building a, a team spirit in here so that's going to be really hard but mm. this I think is, that's, that's making me not be able to sleep every but, night. You know? you know what, honestly it's, it's a one time thing. Yeah. It's a one time thing, yes. In, in perspective of things, it's yeah. like hopefully it can be two times like as you expand to another yeah. location but I think like it does get easier. Like problems come, it does get easier, and it's part of the process. And once you start kind of feeling for it, you're like, okay, you know what? Now I can manage my own expectation. So you can actually do some more prep work in advance, so then that we yeah. can plan accordingly. The next, the next, th the next step would be like to I'm thinking to open just a, like a, a bigger kitchen mm. and more like a main kitchen, and have this store as like a, a satellite. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, when I open the next one, uh, I have a lot more training and there experience, you go. so uh, hopefully that next one will be like a lot smoother yeah, than, yeah. than this one. So much thanks and, and gratitude for you. Oh, I have fun. This. I have fun. This, this is very fun. Like, like telling telling you this this story, it's like uh, um, it, it reminds me like where I started at the yeah. same time. So because not I, long I ago, get, I get yeah. so I get so like tired, like not tired, but so busy these days mm. with like worrying. Mm. That I have for, sometimes I forget like the the, the the beauty of opening my own business. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've been talking to you. Awesome. Thank you. Definitely, you guys, stay tuned to Remy's story, and I'll see you guys in the next video.